Welcome back, everybody. Um, can everyone hear me okay in the back? Yeah, okay. Okay. How was lunch? Good? <laughs> okay. So our next session here is on money matters and using ACORN. Um, so again, my name is Michael Chung. I'm the Associate Registrar Administrative here at Ennis College. I've uh, met some of you in uh, our morning sessions, so welcome back. And the goals of this session um, is to get to know ACORN and all the online tools that you'll be using or some of the online tools you'll be using, um, also understanding university costs um learn tips for successful budgeting and discover the resources to help you with, with all of that um so some of this information may um uh may be new to you some of it may not um for some of you or for a lot of you this might be the first time that you're living away from home um, and doing your own budgeting um for the school year um so hopefully this session will help you understand um some of that and you'll feel like the smartest person alive Okay, so the first thing uh, we'll discuss is the student web services. Um, and these are the, you may or may not have um, stumbled onto this page as yet um, uh, in the course of looking through your course materials. Um, these are the various uh, student web services that are available to you um, as a student. Um, some of these are available to you now, even though you, uh, even though school hasn't started. Um, you, you do have access to, uh, to most of these, I believe. The one that you will be using the most um, in the next few years is ACORN, um, which is the system, is the student, uh, University of Toronto student information system that you would use to do your course enrollment, program enrollment, um, and you can check your fees invoice, you can um, look at your grades and uh, request graduation in a few years. So lots of things that you, you will be doing um, using ACORN. The, uh, another um, web application that you'll be using is uh, Degree Explorer, which is, um, you may have heard from this morning, is the university's uh, degree audit system. You can track your uh, degree in program progress, um, do uh, plan, like some pre-planning for, for future courses and things like that. Um, lots of other web services available here. Um, and then, so as I said, ACORN is the one that you will be using the most. Um, and in terms of how to log in, um, you can log in using um, either your uh, join ID or user ID. It's actually the same, the same thing, the same code. The join ID, if you remember, is uh, what you received on your offer of admission um, and what you used to um, uh, log into the join portal, the join U of T portal. Um, so same password, same, same ID. Um, and the join ID actually becomes your U2 ID once you get your uh, University of Toronto student card or, or your T card. Um, has uh, anyone gotten their T card as yet? Or, okay, most of you. Uh, okay, none of you have gotten it. Um, you can actually get it throughout the summer. Um, the T card office is located at uh, 214 College Street, which is the Koffler Student Services Center. Um, and uh, you can, um, uh, it's open throughout the summer to get it. You can also wait until, um, it's not open today, but you can also wait until September if you're just in town for the day uh, for this session. Um, you can get your T-card uh, when you arrive in, in September as well. But um, either your join ID or your tour ID will work um, to log into the, to the ACORN system. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, so this is the um, actual what it looks like. So to log on to ACORN, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a brief demo. I'm going to log into my own. So this is what the dashboard looks like. Um, again, at this point, you can you um, you can log in using your join ID. And this is what the dashboard looks like. Um, it gives you um, information on uh, key sessional dates, finances, whether you owe anything, um, and also academics. So this is the part that tells you uh, what your registration status is. And um, so for this part here, you're looking at uh, the, the session for 2018-19, fall winter. 
And you see here the uh, status is invited. So all of you should have an invited status at this point, um, which tells you that you're eligible to choose courses or start your course selection um, come your, uh, when your uh, course selection date begins or when your course uh, selection date comes. And so on the left-hand side on the, uh, menu, the main menu part here, um, there's, uh, again, different things that you can do. So on your course enrollment date, you would choose the enroll and manage, and then you would choose courses. And then here's where you, this is uh, where you would actually be uh, adding the, uh, adding your courses. So you would basically type in, so. So you would uh, start typing in, and it will uh, the system will return the results that match your uh, match whatever you typed in, and you can choose. So make sure you be careful when you're adding courses. So see, um, typed in Math 137 here, and it actually returned two results. And I guess can anyone tell me based on what you learned this morning what the difference might be between these two results? Pardon me. Campuses, yes, exactly. So the first one here is the Math 137 Y1. So the one, the last digit, the one tells you that it's on the St. George campus, uh, whereas this one is Y5. So five is for the University of Toronto and Mississauga campus. So you just have to be careful that you uh, choose the correct one. You can always, um, just to be sure, if you're, um, you know, don't want to make a mistake, you can. Um, you can just type in the full the full course code, and that will return the the correct result. So, if you choose that, it will come up with the uh, the different um, uh, lecture activities, as well as uh, tutorial activities. That so you do have to choose one of each, um, and um, and at this point. Um, because course enrollment hasn't actually started yet, um, you can uh, add it to your enrollment cart. So, let's see. Okay, and then you'll see at the in your enrollment cart, it will show up here. So, it, it the enrollment cart is, um, uh, it's just a holding place for the courses that, that you've selected. Um, you actually have to go on on your course selection day, your start date, to uh, to click enroll to finalize the enrollment. So this is sort of just your area where you're planning out which which courses and which sections you're taking. Um, but you actually have to on on your course selection day, you actually have to click the enroll button. Um, and then some of just uh, very quickly, you can see on the side here. Um, the academic history um, here, you can look at all the courses you take. Like right now, there wouldn't be anything on there because um, you're just starting out in, in your first year. Um, but you can track you know, how you're doing in your courses in the academic history. I will spare you from looking at my own <laughs> academic history here because this is actually my account. Um, you can also look at uh, your, which we'll talk about later, your fees invoice. So if you click on financial account. Um, here's where you will view your invoice. I don't have any courses on it, so I don't have, um, I don't actually have a balance right now, but if you click this, you can, you'll be able to see um, your itemized um, invoice, which we'll take a look at a bit later. Okay. Okay, that's just a screenshot of the dashboard that we just looked at. And then uh, for using Acorn, there are a lot of helpful videos that you can um, that you can uh, access, and you can find these links. You don't have to copy down these links. These links are all on the Acorn um, the homepage, the the student web service uh, uh, student ser web services uh, webpage. There's a link to all these videos in case you run into any problems with um, with using the system. The question for you to see what you learned uh, from this morning. Um, can anyone tell me what day you can check your start time or begin to check your start time for enrollment? Any students? <laughs> or everyone, everyone can just tell me. <laughs> 20th of July, yes, that's right. And what is the first day of course enrollment for first year students? 26th. 
And what is the deadline to pay or defer your fees? Sorry? 29th. Yes, August 29th. Perfect. Okay, so some tips for your course enrollment day. Um, make sure you have your schedule, schedule ready to go um, along with some backup options because um, it's possible that some, of, although you will likely get into most of your courses as long as you log in at the at your start time, um, you might just for your, uh, your elective courses, sometimes you may not have priority to enroll and might have to wait until August 3rd to do it. Um, you might want to have some backup options um, to, uh, you know, just in case um, the, the course uh, that you want is full. Um, make sure you've got everything written down, like the course code section code and the preferred sections for lecture, tutorial, and practical. With the use of the enrollment cart, that's, this helps you, so you don't actually have to, you know, if, if it's all prepared in your cart, um, then you should be ready to go. Um, if you use the timetable, you can print, you can print out your, your uh, planned uh, courses and it has all the information you need. Um, as well as when you make changes, make sure you go back and check your courses again um, and also check the timetable to confirm. Um, one thing you should keep in mind is that sometimes the scheduling of courses, the timetable of courses changes um, in the summer. Um, perhaps there's a change in the time or even the date when the class takes place. So make sure you do check back at the web timetable um, to make sure nothing has changed and hasn't moved um, your courses in your schedule. The uh, time to, is the web timetable for, for yes. It, the timetable is a is a website. So yeah, it's a website. Sorry, it's a website. Okay, so this is a um, mock up of an account invoice or your fees invoice. Um, so your fees invoice will go on to Acorn um, starting on July sixteenth. So we'll show you um, how much um, it will cost for the 2018-2019 uh, fall winter session, and we'll have a breakdown of the um, of your fees for the fee charges for the year. Um, it will show you the how much your tuition fees as well as your non-tuition fees. So non-tuition fees could be um, residence fees if you're staying in residence. Um, but otherwise, you're not staying in residence. Most likely, you'll just have the academic, uh, the the tuition fees, rather, um, and we'll have a breakdown of what the what the each charge um, is for. And there are two types of um, or two ways that students are charged um, fees. So either you would pay either program fees or per course fees. So most of uh, most of you in this room will be paying program fees, um, and these are and everyone's fees, um, regardless of course load, um, are initially set as a program fee, which is basically a flat fee um, for anyone taking um, four credits or more. Um, for students that are going into Rotman Commerce next year, uh, next year Rotman uses a 3.0 threshold, so it's a so it's a different threshold to determine whether you pay program fees or per course fees. And uh, the it's based on your credit count um, as of the last day to add courses for the fall as well as for the winter. So for the fall, the fall date is the one that you need to uh, remember, and that's September 19th. Um, and that's basically two weeks into classes. And on that date, the Faculty of Arts and Science will count your courses, see how many you're in. And if you're at that point, if your fall term and Y um, section code were full year courses, um, it totals at least four, then you will be locked into uh, paying to be paying the, the program fee or the flat fee. Um, if it is below four, um, but your S courses um, uh, add up to like uh, uh, the total adds up to four, then you will still be paying program fee. Um, for students who are who know now that they want to be uh, want don't want to take a full time course load, they can elect to change to the per course fees earlier. Um, but I uh, assume most of you are probably planning to take at least um, at least four credits in the coming year. Um, so most of you will end up paying the the program fee for the year. 
So these are just some of the um, uh, uh, fees amounts, uh, the academic fees amounts for domestic, both for domestic and international students. Um, there are also a set of fees uh, called the incidental and ancillary fees. That's usually about 1600 that pays for um, a lot of the student services that um, uh, you'll have access to, um, things like the Athletic Center, Heart House, um, and some of the student society fees. Um, for Rhyme and Commerce and Computer Science students, um, after first year, uh, you will uh, be paying, if you get into these programs, you will be paying um, uh, deregulated fees, which are a higher uh, set of fees than, um, than students in other programs. So just keep that in mind in terms of budgeting for, for the future. A lot. <laughs> no, um, it's quite, I, I don't have the amounts in front of me right now, but um, it's, uh, it's significantly more than the, um, the, the students in other programs, and if you're in those programs. I, I'd have to look that up, but we, we can go on to the, I'll go on to the website in a second. So the per course fees um, are students who are taking less than four credits. If your count is less than four by the uh, by the January date, um, then you can uh, then you maybe you would be eligible to pay the per course fees. Um, but it is possible we've had students in the past where they accidentally they have opted to pay the per course fees or because of their course load, but they done some adding and dropping of courses, which ultimately um, brought them back up to the threshold for program fees. So do be careful if you are in the per course fee um, and you do any ads and drops, make sure you do uh, talk to our office, the registrar's office, if you are thinking of doing that and you're paying the per course fees, um, because again, the difference can be very uh, significant. And um, so for per course fees, uh, these are just the amounts, some of the amounts that um, you can expect to pay. And we'll take a look at the fees website later, just to, um, uh, the information for 2018 and 19 um, isn't available as yet, but we can take a look at last year's fees. Um, again, Rotman uses a lower threshold as three credits uh, or more for determining program fees. So how to pay your fees. So um, if you're paying within Canada, um, and uh, the most common way of paying is through, uh, through the bank. And so you can do online telephone banking, bank machine and branch. Um, there is also an option to pay uh, by credit card, um, and that's on Acorn. Uh, but there is a convenience fee charged, I think it's 1.5%. Um, and uh, you can also, there's also a third option of converting some of your travel or your credit card um, uh, or travel reward points um, into to help paying, to, to pay your tuition fees. If you are paying outside of Canada, if you're um, not going to be here in the summer and you're paying uh, outside of Canada, there is the Western Union Global Pay website, um, or you can pay by bank draft or money order to the Office of Student Accounts. And you can find all of this information on the fees website. So we can go there now to take a look. Okay, so as I said, the 2018-19 information um, is not yet available, um, but we can take a look at last year's. So the... So for... So this brings you to the um, fee schedule for the for last year, this past year, um, and there are different categories of uh, students. So if you're taking up, uh, so all first, like if you're in first year, you're not in the program Robin or, or computer science, um, and you're paying the program fee. Uh, this past year, um, the uh, the total fee was eight thousand one hundred thirty-four, and if we look at the uh, and this is the per course fee schedule. So depending on how many courses you take, you're charged um, an amount per course or per credit that you're taking. And, okay, so this is the schedule for the commerce. If you're in a commerce program, um, it's about $10,000 more. And, um, uh, than other students in, in other programs. 
So it has a, quite a significant uh, difference. Um, and for keeps going and this this and this is for computer science. So the computer science is about thirteen. And so I'm just giving an idea. So the fees uh, for this year, this is the, this is a schedule from last year. So the fees this year just expected to be a bit higher. Um, usually fees do go up uh, a bit, uh, go up every year. So. New refund deadline. So um, for uh, if you're paying program fees, you do stay in the program fee unless you drop under your 4.0 and are actually eligible to switch to per course. Um, and you can only get a full or partial refund only if all courses are dropped. So if, if, um, if someone were to cancel your, their registration altogether, um, and that the percentage of refund that you get it does depend on that, uh, the date when you cancel your registration. For per course fees, it, 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 also, it definitely depends on when you drop because it's calculated, the refunds are calculated as a percentage uh, for the specific course. So um, there, on that fees website that we just looked at, there is also a schedule, uh, the refund schedule, which tells you if you drop by this date, then you can expect you know, this amount, uh, this percentage back. Um, and it's on, it's on the website. And this will also, uh, the information uh, on that fees website should be updated by mid-July, around the same time, usually just before your invoice goes up um, onto Acorn. So you can take a look at that when, when it becomes available. So if you, just to, rem uh, just to remind you, um, if you do drop a course after the first two weeks of classes, you are still um, most likely responsible for paying for all of it, um, especially if you're in, um, a pro if you're paying the program fee. Um, so just because you are no longer in the course doesn't mean that you're not responsible for paying it, so um, just keep that in mind. Uh, don't ever lose track of your waitlisted courses. So sometimes if you are on a waitlist for a course, um, and you maybe missed the email that told you that you've been enrolled. Um, you're, once the waitlist enrolls you in the course, you will be charged for it. So just make sure you don't uh, lose sight of that. And I mean, it's a good idea anyways to check ACORN um, uh, periodically to just to make sure that you're, you know, nothing has changed your scheduling and, and um, that you're still enrolled in all the courses that you think you're enrolled in. Um, and then if you're not sure about your fees or how changing your course load um, will change your fees, please do come and see us in, in the registrar's office. Okay, so next section is on budgeting and finances. So the University of Toronto does have a policy on student financial support that says no student offered admission to a program at the U of T should be unable to, com to enter or complete the program due to a lack of financial means. Um, so we have many measures in place to help students, um, but the presumption is that students will use the expected resources first. Um, and that, what are your resources? So that includes uh, help from your family, your own, if you're working and, uh, you know, it's good, if you're working during the summer, um, definitely a good idea to save up uh, for school. If you, um, uh, your parents have, um, uh, uh, um, contributed to an RESP um, or, or other educational plans or, or trusts, um, you can, that would also, that you can use that money to help you pay for school. Um, any scholarships that you received, um, student loans is the main one, which we'll, we'll uh, talk about uh, in a bit. Um, UTAPs, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, also, if you're working during the year, uh, part, doing part-time, uh, in a part-time job, um, and also uh, bank line of credit. These are sort of different types of resources um, that, are, uh, that students usually use for, for financing their, their education. The scholarships, so um, if you had received an admission award, uh, you will have received notifica a notification by now, um, whether it's from Innis or from U of T. Um, and there are definitely other, many other scholarships and awards available during your time at U of T um, based on uh, either academic, uh, academic progress um, as well as leadership. So uh, we do have lots of uh, what's called in-course scholarships that you can qualify for um, after you start studying here. So don't be discouraged if you didn't receive a scholarship on admission. There are lots of opportunities um, 
uh, lots of scholarships that you can either apply for or are automatically considered for um, if you're, if you're um, doing really well in school. Um, there's also a handout in your package um, uh, for useful websites with information on financial aid, so you can take a look at that for some of those sites um, to look for scholarships. And uh, some websites have lists of other more specific scholarships that might have um, particular uh, criteria that you have to meet, um, and also some external sites. Um, also check um, potentially parents' workplaces uh, might have um, uh, scholarships and awards available for, for dependents. So OSAP is the um, main source of financial aid uh, for students attending university or college. Um, to qualify for, so OSAP is, stands for Ontario Student Assistance Program. And um, to qualify for funding, um, you must be either a Canadian citizen, permanent resident, or protected person, and you have to prove, and you have to ha um, ha um, have provincial residency for a certain amount of time uh, prior to studying. Um, and your eligibility for funding or for financial help depends on your personal financial situation. Um, so you and your family's income, uh, family size, and uh, living situation. Um, also course load. So um, in most cases, um, you have to be a full-time student. And we'll talk about uh, that a bit later as to what, what it means to be a full-time student. Um, there, is, there are some loans for part-time enrollment as well um, uh, through OSAP. You do have to maintain satisfa satisfactory academic progress which means you do have to pass um, it's called at least a 60% course load each year um, in order to continue to receive funding. And um, finally, educational expenses, how much you need for tuition, books, you know, living expenses if you're living off campus, um, that kind of thing. So these uh, criteria um, will determine, uh, the ministry will determine um, if you're eligible and uh, how much you're eligible for. So OSAP, or if any of you are coming from a different province, uh, another provincial government assistance program consists of both loans and grant portions. So, um, and these are released in two installments. You get 60% of your OSAP in the fall and 40% um, in the winter. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, the loans do remain interest-free while you're in school full-time, and you don't have to repay them until you finish your studies, until you stop being a full-time student. So this is why this is a main resource of uh, financial aid for, for students, um, and uh, you don't have to worry about you know, interest accumulating while, while, you're, while you're still studying. You don't have, and you have, you don't have to repay them until later. Uh, but just remember that the ministry does do checks of the amounts that you enter on your application. Um, uh, yes? P.Y., I believe you... Um, actually... Yeah, the, you probably aren't eligible for, uh, PEY is the professional experience year, it's, um, in, it's basically an internship and you would, be earning, um, you would be earning income. So I don't believe you would be eligible for funding and if so, it wouldn't be much because you, you aren't paying tuition during that time and you're actually earning money. So you, you likely wouldn't be eligible for that. And also you're not in courses. Um, while you're in PY. So to, to be eligible for OSAP, you have to be enrolled in a six, like a, basically a full-time course load. Yep. Um, yes, so you can, I believe you can get um, a, con like if you're participating in a program like that, you can get something from enrollment services to indicate that you're participating in this, uh, it's, it is part of school. Um, so I believe you can get that, but I, you know what, I'm gonna check on that and, and, get, and maybe I can get your information later and I'll get back to you on that. So if, and there, if there's any changes in your financial um, information or your academic progress or you drop courses, um, you should let enrollment services know. So enrollment services is the, the office on campus um, that's right across from St. George Station that, is, um, that uh, basically is in charge of uh, financial aid and um, would have uh, OSAP information and would have access to your, your OSAP status and everything like that. So um, definitely let them know because they're, they're the ones that are in touch with the, the ministry of your loans. 
Okay, so for new new for this year, um, OSA funding will actually be automatically directed um, towards your tuition fees first. So, and this will happen both in the fall and in the winter. So what that means is that when you get your OSAP assessment, um, the amount, so in the past, the OSAP money goes directly to you and it's up to you to pay your fees with, with, the, with the funding. Um, starting this year, starting this fall, um, the, the ministry will actually direct the money directly to U of T to first pay off your fall fees. Um, and then anything that's remaining uh, will, uh, will be deposited into your bank account. Okay, so if your funding is greater, the if your OSAP funding is greater than your fees for the, for the term, then the rest will be deposited. If your funding is less uh, than your fees for the term, um, then are, you are responsible for paying the rest. Okay, so for the second example here, if your OSAP say is twenty five hundred for the fall, if that's that's the sixty percent of your loan, twenty five uh, twenty five hundred, and your fall tuition is four thousand, then you do still have to pay the the difference, the fifteen hundred. Um, uh, to, uh, to so so you don't accumulate um, service charges, um, but if you do, if your OSAP uh, entitlement is seven thousand for the fall, uh, that's sixty percent, and um, your tuition is four thousand, then um, then the rest of the three thousand will just be deposited in your in your bank account, and you can use that for for your other expenses and books and things like that. Yes. So for example, because before it was also deposits money in. Oh, yes. Right now it's saying mm -hmm. also deposits money to U of T first. Yeah. And then you U of T deposit money into our bank account. No, uh, OSAP will de the will deposit into your bank account. So you don't need to do anything. Like the OSAP, if you once you once the OSAP confirms your or once enrollment services confirms that the student is a full time student is enrolled in the right courses, then OSAP will direct the the money. So. Sorry, U of T will let them know. Okay, this student owes four thousand. So, so OSAP will direct the four thousand to the to pay off their fees, and the rest of the three thousand will just go to you directly, go to the bank account directly. Yeah. And still going to be sixty forty. Right? Still going to be sixty forty. So basically, in full, we're looking for money in the bank account. Pardon me. Because the tuition fees are equal, first mm -hmm. semester mm -hmm. and second semester, mm -hmm. but the OSAP. Is Yes. Be... Yeah. So in the second term, the same thing will happen. So it'll be a less. It will likely be uh, because you're only getting forty percent, or you you've already gotten sixty percent in the first term. The second term, when you get the forty percent, it will still be applied to the winter fees, um, and then whatever balance again will will be deposited into the bank account. Okay, so OSAP tips. Um, if you are planning on applying for OSAP, um, make sure you apply as soon as possible because the sooner you apply, um, the, uh, the, the sooner you'll get an assessment telling you um, how much you can expect. And so you can you know, start budgeting for the school year. Um, generally it does take eight to 10 weeks for processing. Um, we would recommend that you try to submit your application um, at the latest by the end of June just so that everything will be in order uh, for, for, when, for when classes begin. You get all uh, your fees paid up and, um, and the rest of, if there's any uh, excess, it will go to you. Um, again, if anything has changed, definitely let OSAP know through enrollment services. Uh, if you don't understand your assessment, talk to your enrollment services. Um, if you've been asked for documentation, make sure you submit it right away to avoid delays because unless all the documentation, all the supporting documentation has been submitted, your funds will not be released. So make sure you do that. And also your, you, this, the um, payment of your fees from OSAP it will not happen until September. So you don't get your you don't get um, your OSAP money until classes actually begin. So it is important that you defer your fees um, to complete your registration. So on Acorn, going back to the Acorn system, there is an um, there is an option on the side menu for tuition uh, fee deferral, and um, this. Basically, it tells you what what if tuition fee deferral is. At this point, it's not active because you're there's no you don't have fees invoices yet. But usually, after the invoices become available um, in mid July, um, you should be able to actually no probably by the beginning of August you should be able to defer your fees 
And basically what uh, tuition fee deferral means is that it, it's an agreement between you and the university saying that you're saying that you agree to pay your fees once, um, like if, if there's anything owing after OSAP um, deposits or that does the payment, um, that you agree to pay the rest. Um, and all your tuition fees for the school year are due at the latest uh, by the following April, the end of April, uh, which is the end of the school year. Uh, but just keep in mind that if you do have any outs if you do have an outstanding balance, um, you uh, should pay it off as soon as possible because service charges do start um, to do go on to your account starting on October 15th for students who are not receiving OSAP, um, and then monthly service charges are added um, every month, 1.5%. Uh, so um, you should. Uh, try to pay off your fees um, always as soon as possible, um, as much as possible and as soon as possible. Other resources um, you might have is during working during the school year. It is increasingly the norm um, that students um, are working or have a part-time job. Um, you can consider it if you um, if your situation is tight, or you can come to us if, if it causes problems, if you're you know, finding that you're working too much and it's affecting your study, definitely come and talk to us because we can help you with that. Um, and if you are on a, a tight budget, work and save in the summer instead of taking courses, uh, taking summer school. There is the Career Center or the Career Learning Network, which has um, uh, information on um, on job postings, um, as well as um, you can uh, attend workshops um, to help you with applying for job applications. Um, there's also a work study program, which is for students who are receiving uh, or who, who may be receiving financial aid, but it's, it's actually not a requirement, but it's part-time jobs for students on campus. Great way to gain work experience uh, for later, and, um, uh, and it's schedule it and it's pretty flexible and it's, it's again gives you valuable some valuable work experience working in uh, on campus and you can find the information on the CLN which is on that student web service of, uh, navigation you can uh, link from there so some of the costs that you can expect um, tuition uh, if you're living in residence meal plans uh, if you have one or, or commuting um, to and from campus. Uh, variable costs could be clothes and entertainment, like going out to movies or hanging out with friends um, and the little things. So these all kind of add up. Um, so it is important to have um, a budget for the year. Um, again, this is, for some of you, this is probably the first time that you're, at, you're living away from home or just you know um, paying your way. Uh, for school, um, so uh, it's a good idea to sort of um, uh, plan ahead uh, and definitely um, make a budget for yourself. These are some of the costs and estimates um, that you can expect for the school year uh, for food, usually 250 to 300 a month. Again, depends on whether you're living off campus or where you're at home. You know, uh, try to bring your lunch or dinner if you have late classes. Um, that does save you a lot of money um, rather than purchasing food all the time on campus. Uh, personal care, cell phone bills, um, you know, uh, books, you can expect them to be around 750 to 1000 depending on the courses that you take. Um, there are also options of buying used books um, and actually a lot of classes now have online um, uh, textbooks. Um, and entertainment, definitely this can vary from 100 to uh, way more than 100. Um, it's a good idea to pick a reasonable amount of money and, uh, and sticking to that budget because these costs can get out of hand. Um, and uh, yeah, try, you know, try doing free activities um, that you know, won't cost you anything. And you know, this, I think this is a good idea to take up some cash on the first day of the month and then once that runs out, then don't take it out anymore. And try not to use your debit card, I guess. Um, this is just a, a sample budget worksheet um, that you can use. There are lots of other free ones that you can find on the internet. Um, and you can, uh, actually I'll show you. Never mind. Um, 
anyway, it's a it's basically a spreadsheet that that tells you um, uh, where you can just plug in the numbers what you what you're spending on tuition, residence, food, entertainment, and it just keeps uh, tabs, and you can um, multiply that by just remember the school year is eight months, so. Um, you can put in uh, all the costs, uh, the fixed costs as well as the, uh, the variable costs, and um, just make sure you're uh, on track or keep it, stay on track. And as I said before, it's probably the first time, maybe the first time you're living away from home. Uh, track your costs and spending now. Plan an allowance. Um, Again, remember that your costs are full eight months and um, loan money comes in installments, know what to pay and what to hold. So um, again, that goes back to the OSAP um, that you receive. Grants and bursaries. So if you are getting uh, maximum OSAP, so um, getting max the maximum amount that um, the ministry has assessed, um, but they've uh, assessed based on your financial situation that you may need more. Uh, the University of Toronto will kick in uh, what's called UTAPS, um, and that is a grant to help cover the gap between um, what you need and what you are given. Um, it also, it, it, you, you may receive UTAPS if your fees uh, go up because of uh, enrollment in a commerce or computer science. Um, the ministry doesn't fund you for that extra amount that uh, you're paying um, in tuition for these programs. So UTOPS will most likely um, help you out and um, uh, to help cover the difference. And on the uh, financial aid website, um, you can find more information about UTOPS. So this is the future.utoronto.ca. Um, and that's a site that um, Enrollment Services manages. So if you go to finances, you, you uh, can find all sorts of information on financial aid, including OSAP and um, other uh, information about work study that I talked about earlier. Um, so it's a good idea to check this out at some point. Emergency grants. So um, the college um, has grant money for the fall winter session. And this is something that um, if you run into, so if OSAP, uh, you were assessed for OSAP, you were given the, it paid off your fees and um, you're left with um, uh, either OSAP didn't cover your, your, your feet, your fall fees, or if it covered it and then you just have a small amount for living expenses and maybe you, know, you have some unexpected costs during the year. Um, we do in the college uh, registrar's office, we do have um, grant assistance available for our students. And this you can apply for using the, uh, the uh, grant application form on ACORN. Um, and that's available from October to March. Uh, you would then make an appointment with a financial aid counselor in, in our office. And the applications are viewed by the committee, which um, uh, uh, we determine whether expenses are fair and accurate, whether there was an emergency, whether there were any unforeseen expenses, um, and whether the student has maximized all available resources. So it is dependent on you know, um, us knowing how much OSAP um, you've received already. Um, and, uh, and then we will look at your financial situation to see if uh, we're able to help out. But definitely, if you do run into um, financial problems, make sure you do come in to see us. Uh, most likely, we'll be able to help you. Um, or at least we can help you even, you know, if you need help with budgeting and things like that, we can also help you with that. Um, in the summer, um, there are no grants and no UTAPs. So um, for summer, for those of you interested in doing summer school, um, there are uh, there is OSAP available, so you can apply for OSAP. Um, and uh, uh, so you are eligible to receive OSAP as, as long as you are enrolled in a full-time course load, which um, corresponds to one and a half courses during the summer. Um, the maximum is two for the summer. Um, however, unpaid fees from the summer, uh, do, uh, they do stop you from being enrolled for the following fall winter. Uh, actually, no, unpaid fees, it should be unpaid fees from your previous fall winter. That will, that, uh, if you do have arrears, 
um, as of April 30th of the previous year, um, you will be blocked from course enrollment. So that's why it's another reason why it's important for you to pay off your fees as soon as possible and definitely by the end of April. Uh, but also unpaid fees from the summer because the registration deadline is at the end of August usually. Um, the expectation is that you would have paid off everything, um, uh, your all your summer fees by that time, as well as any arrears that you may have from, from the, fall, the previous fall winter session. All of that must be paid by August 29th this year um, in order to complete your registration for next year. Other resources I might consider are uh, lines of, line of credits uh, for students. Um, this might help in a pinch. Um, there are fewer rules than OSAP, but there is a cosigner that's required, and just consider the interest that you do uh, accumulate. And so money, uh, worry about money. The parents in this room probably know about that as well. So worry about money can be stressful and, and can affect your uh, studies as well as your health. So it's definitely important for you to plan ahead, budget ahead, um, just from the get-go. Um, it does help you later on. Just take control of your finances, um, stick to your budget, um, avoid excessive spending. Um, and the university does um, have financial aid available, but we do expect you to be responsible um, spending your money, um, but definitely ask us for help if, um, if you have any questions. And uh, finally, your reliable first stop for information and advice is uh, the Innis Registrar's Office. Um, make an appointment with us. Uh, we don't have, so we don't, Enrollment Services is the main place that you should go to if you have questions about your OSAP loans, because um, we don't have all the details about your OSAP, um, but we can definitely offer feedback, we can uh, we can um, check with uh, Enrollment Services on your behalf, but it's uh, usually best to talk to them directly if you have OSAP questions, but everything else we can help you uh, with budgeting, we can help you with counseling, encouragement, um, uh, but definitely in Roman services, uh, you can go to as well for um, if you have specific questions about your loans and, and your and your OSAP uh, eligible lease status. Is it services? Is it the one that no, it's a cost from St. George. So it's 172 St. George Street. Yeah. Okay, so that's the end of this presentation. But please do remember to uh, fill out your, I think it's yellow student survey in your package. Um, and definitely help us uh, plan for future sessions. Uh, the day is not over. We have uh, two more session or one more session to go. And so if you're in your schedule, um, you'll see that there's a session on professional faculties, which is here. Um, you can remain in this room. And then there's also a presentation on the U of T's library system, which is um, across the street where you have lunch in the events room, uh, where Kate Johnson, our librarian, uh, will talk to you about the U of T libraries. Here is Claudia Li Tang, um, uh, who will be talking to you about professional faculties if you're interested in applying for later. Okay, thank you. Do you have your. Yes? Just tell them that you're allowed for both sides.